Today in this vlog, we're going to continue with factoring trinomials. We've done the, you know, plain vanilla trinomial factoring where a is equal to 1, and then we have some trinomials where the a term is not equal to 1, the coefficient, and we use grouping method. And just recently, or in this group of vlogs, we worked on the difference of two squares and factoring that. Now, what happens if we have a trinomial that is a perfect square? What does that even mean? What does that mean? What it means is the trinomial comes from a binomial times itself. Okay, now we're going to notice or see trinomials. And if we recognize the pattern, we will know how to factor them into a binomial times itself. When we, in previous vlogs, we've done the product of a binomial squared. The pattern recognizes that our two middle terms are the same. Then when we combine them, they double. Okay? If we had x minus y squared, as we see here, it will be the same thing. If I have x minus y and the quantity squared, I multiply it out, the minus 2xy and then minus 2xy, they're both negative, and it becomes minus 2 times xy. And then if the previous one, if they were positive, up to the red example up top becomes a positive 2xy. So that looking at the trinomial, if our a term is a perfect square, and our c term is a perfect square, and our b term is double the square root of each, it'll work out. We'll do an example now.
So the big question is always, how can I know if it fits? We'll look at each term individually. The A term, we'll look at it. It's 4x squared. Does it have a square root? That's a whole number in a variable with a, with a whole number exponent. Yes. OK. 4x squared would be 2x the whole thing squared. OK, that works out. Okay, so we have 9y squared. The square root is 3y. That works out. Okay, that's good. So far we've got two conditions satisfied. First term and third terms are perfect squares. Now the middle term. I have to think about double. Double what? Double the first and third? Not t entirely. Watch, watch what happens. So now, I pass three different conditions. The first term is a perfect square. The third term is a perfect square. And our middle term is double the square root of our other two terms. As you can see, we have 2 times 2 times 3. Now, it's a positive. We have positive 12xy, which means it's the, the, the square of x plus y. Okay. Now our next example. P squared. All right. Well, that that's an that's a perfect square. P times P is equal to P squared. Okay, I have negative 16, and you know what, all we need to know is that it, it combines to 16. So the negative 16p tells me it's going to be the difference. It's going to be p minus 8, the whole thing squared. Pass three conditions. Now let's look on the, the example B here. 9m squared. If 
I square that square root of that is not is 3m. Then 16 the square root of that is 4. So let's write that down before we continue. <laughs> Forgot the three. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so the first and third terms are perfect squares. Now the middle term So the middle term is double of the first and third term square roots. So you have 3m minus 4 quantity squared. Now our C example. 5x squared, that doesn't have a perfect, it's not a perfect square, but I think all of our terms can be divided by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, 60 divided by 5 is 12, 180 divided by 5 is 36. All right, we'll see what happens. And now, as I can see, the x squared is a perfect square. 36 is also a perfect square. In the middle term, I have 1 times 6. If I double that, it is 12, so it works out. Okay, now for you, you need to practice. Practice with different examples and you'll feel much better. See you next vlog. Thank you.